you enjoy drinking a good quality rice wine and thought you wouldn't mind making yourself? Then come along with us and we'll show you how easy it really is. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back. And if this is your first time to our channel, it's great having you join us. And so today I've got with me Father Jeff. Hey, um. Now you might remember Father Jeff when we made our honey mead video, which was brilliant. Yeah. Um, that, that was just so popular with all my mates. And I've run out now. Good. <laughs> So Father Jeff spoke to me back a few months ago and said he'd like to make another video and I asked him what would he like to make and we sort of threw up a few ideas and we came up with rice wine. So uh, Father Jeff's been making this uh, for a number of years and had a good success. In actual fact he has Chinese heritage. A little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so in the 1850s they had the Victorian Gold Rush and many people from China came to be part of that, including my great-great-great-grandfather, so he married an Irish woman working in a pub and yeah, the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so rice wine is really easy to make. It's even easier than honey mead, which itself is quite quick and easy. So what you need is uh, sticky rice or what they call glutinous rice. And this particular brand that we have here is the Lion brand, which is actually manufactured in Thailand. And the bag is 25 kilos. Now the reason we bought a 25 kilo, even though we don't need that much, it's much more economical. So you can buy them in two kilo bags, but they're about four times the price. And so what we're gonna be doing here today is making two two lots. And so the yeast we're going to be using is actually a fungus enzyme and this is made in China. So rice wine is pronounced mi jiao in Chinese. Is that correct, Father? Yeah, mi jiao. Beautiful. I'm just still getting my head around the pronunciation. So rice wine was discovered to be made in China thousands of years ago and in actual fact it spread around the Asian region. And so Japanese make the rice wine as well and they call their sake, which is almost made the exact same way, uh, but they use a slight different rice. They use the sakamai rice. Beautiful. Okay, so now we'll get into it and we'll show you how to make it. Let's go. Okay, so we've got the scale here. I've calibrated it for this bowl. I'm gonna place in five kilos of this glutinous rice into the bowl. Father, if I can get you, give me a hand. That's it. Beautiful. And there we are. So now I'm gonna pour this into this pot and we're gonna do another batch. Okay, so we've got here 10 litres of water. We're gonna be putting five kilo of rice to 10 litres of water. And so I filled up and measured the water with a jug. And so now we're gonna just pour this into the pot. Beautiful. Okay, so the water's just up to here. Gives it plenty of room for boiling. So I'll just get the stove onto three quarter and just get it boiled up a bit. Fantastic. Okay, we'll get this one on the boil. So we've got the big elements going. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll just turn the light on so we can see a little bit. Now, just so the rice does not stick to the base, we're just gonna give it a periodical stir. Okay, that's that one. I'll just give this one a quick stir as well. And so what we're gonna do is try to get that up to around about 65, 70 degree. Uh, we don't wanna boil out all the oxygen. So we just wanna cook it nice and soft. Is that right, Father? Yeah, it's just like, same with beer. You just need to cook the grain. It's not as though you were gonna actually eat the rice. So yep, yeah, okay. That's cool, that's the main thing. Beautiful. Okay, so now we've let this boil up for roughly about half an hour. And um, we had to be really, really careful because the bottom was actually burning. So um, Dee from Country Brewer did recommend that you put a gauze underneath when you're doing grain uh, beer. Now, I probably should have used this for the rice as well. So I do recommend that. And another thing I could have done is actually boiled the water and then put the rice straight in. No big deal. I, we just had to keep uh, stirring them to make sure they didn't burn. So if, I, if you are gonna do this method, make sure you do that. So we'll just have a quick look. And so now the rice has become a nice mash. As you can see how that's looking. Um, so you don't get this to a normal consistency of rice. 
So what we're aiming for here is not to make rice to eat, but we're making rice as a mash, as you would normally do if you're making a beer or a brew. Okay, so uh, Father Jeff was actually saying that um, this actually, this rice wine really is in the category of a rice beer or brew, because when you're making a wine, it's usually fermenting fruit, so juices. So what we're trying to do is activate the gluten in the rice, and so then that way the yeast can actually consume the rice. I'm going to let it sit for another hour just with a blanket around it with the uh, cooktop off and just let it consume all the water. Okay, so while we let this sit, we'll now sterilise and sanitise all the equipment, the fermenter and all the bits and pieces. Okay, so I've just boiled a jug of two litres of boiling water and I'm going to now put in chlorinated trisodium phosphate. Uh, I got this from Country Brewer, uh, so if you're interested I will put a link in the descriptions below for their uh, stores. So all you do is just put one teaspoon per litre. Now we're going to be doing two litres here, so we're going to put two teaspoons and we'll just pour the whole lot in. And just be careful you don't burn yourself. Okay, so now we've put our gloves on because this is going to get a little warm. It's advised you just let this cool down a little bit. All we want to do is just uh, trigger the chemical reaction, give that a bit of a stir, just give it a few minutes. And so we're going to be washing down everything and I generally just use a cloth. Okay, and these are the bags that we're going to be putting rice in. Uh, so we've got two for two uh, fermenters. And so the reason we're going to put in bags, because when you take the rice out at a later date, you're going to find it's a lot easier to have it in a bag already. And now these bags are made for brewing, so we do need to sanitize these, and we need to sanitize, as I said before, everything. All right, so I'll put these in. Okay, so while we're waiting for this one to cool down, I'll put some chlorinated triacetylene phosphate in this one as well and fill that one up. All right, so this has cooled down a bit now. I'm just gonna give these bags a good swirl. Okay, so now I just need to wash these out with cold water. And you can see how clean these become. Okay, so Father, before you put them down, I'm gonna spray this bench with phosphoric acid. Now this is just a sanitizer. And so, okay, wash really, really well around the handles, around the rim, uh, don't miss anywhere. And when I empty this, I'm gonna let it run through the tap as well. So then that will be sanitized. Just gonna make sure we get everywhere. Clean that up, okay. Also, once you've done all that, make sure you clean the outside because you want to get rid of all the microorganisms. Okay, so now wash this one out. So we're trying to be very thorough here. Okay, so now I'll just tip it all out. So once again, you do need to wash it out straight away in cold water. Now I'll just sanitize it with phosphoric acid. And this is a food grade uh, phosphoric acid. So you can actually just uh, spray it on and just uh, take it to the sink, dra drain it uh, of its water, but do not wash it out. So now I'll just spray the bag. So Father, do you actually do this process? Uh, not this thoroughly, but I... Um... Can you see the benefit of it? Yeah. Because we need to let this ferment for 30 days, and you said that uh, you've had a couple of times where the, uh, the rice went a little bit mouldy. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is prevent this. So once we uh, put the airlock in, I want uh, the yeast to uh, consume the, the gluten from the rice, and then, uh, and then the CO2 will build up, and then it'll just kill off the yeast. So we don't want any bacteria to grow once the uh, fermenting process has finished. Okay, so it's well over eight hours, so it does take a long time for the rice to cool down. In actual fact, I did assist it by just uh, turning the rice over a little bit, just making sure I didn't introduce any bacteria. And the temperature we're aiming for, uh, it does say anywhere between 30 to 40 degree. Okay, I'm just gonna spray the thermometer with phosphoric acid and just do a final check on the temperature. Okay, and there are hot spots in the rice, depending on where you put the thermometer. So some points will be cooler, some will be warmer. So that's already gone to 34 now. It'll probably stop at 35. And if you go to the edges, they're gonna be below 30. So I, I think it's pretty safe to say that we're well under 40 degree, uh, and I'd say on an average temperature, it's around about probably 32, 33. Okay, so now we're just gonna prepare the yeast. Uh, so the yeast come in 
packs of uh, five, and each pack has two balls of yeast in it. So um, uh, uh, Father Jeff was saying that uh, the best way to handle this is by crushing it. Is that correct? Oh, that breaks easy. So you make it what into a powder form? Okay. Okay, the last one. We're ready to go. So now we'll get into it. We'll get the bag. And we'll place it partially into the fermenter. Okay. And now we're just going to spoon in the rice. Okay, so you can see the consistency of the rice. It's called sticky rice for a reason. As you can see, very porridgey. In actual fact, sometimes it can actually be a lot drier than this. So now Father's just gonna sprinkle a little bit of yeast in at a time. Beautiful. How's that looking? Looking good. So we've ended up using one ball per kilo of rice. Is that right? Okay, and is that a normal uh, yeah. sort of ratio? Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, so one ball per kilo. Well, okay. So no bit, burn bits on the bottom, which is good. I've made it a lot of different ways, and this looks like the most consistent. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit more on top and we're done. I've noticed a number of times that I make it, even just sprinkling it in with the yeast in the air, it does irritate your eyes a lot if it gets in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so now we'll just close this bag off. We'll lock it off with the cord. Okay, I'll just put an open knot. Okay, so now, one thing to note is you do not put any extra water in here. Okay, so I'll just close this off. Okay, so I've got the airlock in. So now, after a couple of days, you'll start seeing this bubble up and it will bubble up for a little while. Uh, allow that to do it. Uh, so when it reduces in the bubbles, it means that the yeast is, is slowly eaten through the rice or the glucose. Okay, so now we'll finish off the other batch uh, and we'll come back to this in 30 days. Okay, it's the 28th day and the brew is looking really good. Father, I'm very excited about this. Me too. So, um, on the first week, it took a while before it started bubbling, but on the first week it was really bubbling a fair amount. Uh, one was faster than the other, funny enough. The one that was a bit more gluggy, which was this one here, which was the second brew, um, was fermenting slower initially and then just sped up. Uh, the other one was uh, fermenting much earlier, bubbling much earlier and finished earlier. And so you can see here, uh, that you can see different colors. I don't know if you can see it on video, but you can see different shades. So there is a bag in there. It's giving that crease look. Um, and there's also the sediment on the bottom. So that's all the sediment of the rice that's been uh, fermented and just uh, now the waste. And so now what we're gonna do is drain these two fermenters into this fermenter. So this is the Cooper's fermenter and it's a three part system. Now I've already sterilized it. And so now I'm just gonna give it a quick sanitize. So I'm using phosphoric acid again. So once you spray that, just clean it out. Okay, so now I'll just spray the little bottler because we will be using this. We won't be using the valve section, so I should have taken that off first. Okay, so I'll just keep this valve on the side. If you do take the valve off, be careful. There's a little section here on the bottom that actually can be lost. It does fall out, so just put that on the side for now. And so this is gonna help us to do the racking. Okay, and so now I'm also gonna spray this pot. So once again, you don't wash out the phosphoric acid. What I'm gonna do before we start racking it over, I'm just gonna take a hydrometer reading. So now it's a fluid, we can actually take a reading. So that's the color. It's a creamy sort of white. Okay, so the reading comes out at 0.99. So what we're gonna do is record that. Whatever you do, don't put this back in the fermenter. Uh, so either throw it out or try it. Cheers. Cheers. It's already tasting like a wine. Tastes like wine. It's very nice. Mm. So you're the expert on this. Do you like it? I really like it. Yeah. So from this, from a cloudy milky color, it will become clearer as the more we rack it. So as I said, we're gonna rack this one over now, uh, and then we're gonna let it sit for another two months before we rack it again. First fermenter coming across. Yeah, the tap height is perfect. Okay, so the little bottle is on without the valve. All right, we'll put the lid out of the way. 
Okay, so now I'll just lift that bag up, just let it slowly drain. Oh, that's looking fantastic, isn't it? So what we'll do, instead of wasting time, yeah. I'll just put this into this pot here. Look how fast that's draining. That's actually draining a fair amount. But I'll just put this inside just to hurry that up and let that drain right there. Beautiful. All right, so while that's draining, now on an angle, I'm trying to minimize how much fall this has into the base. Mm -hmm. So it just slides on the wall. So I'm just gonna open that tap. And look at that, that looks fantastic. Just tilt it a little bit for me. Now what I'm gonna do is sit this upright. Uh, like that. So this tap has a sediment filter inside, so it stops the actual, the gunk on the bottom, uh, or the sediment uh, coming into the tap. Yeah, we're getting to the end now, so that just, that last bit of gunk, I just leave that out. Okay, great. All right, we'll take the little bottle off, and we'll move this one out of the way. Okay, so that's finished. I'll close that off. This is looking pretty good. So we've got around 15 and a half liter in here. So Father says he normally just uh, gives it a bit of a drain, squeezes it a bit. Okay, Father, what we'll do, we'll just put that first one into this bowl. Mm -hmm. That's done, out of the way. Yeah, that's, that's solid. I don't think you're gonna get much more of that. Yeah, same, same as that one. All right, I'll pull this out of the way. Okay, now the magic moment. Father, if you can pour that in and let's see how far we're gonna go. It looks like it's gonna get close to 20 liters. Wow, that is actually fantastic. It's gonna get, and look at that. You are a smidgen off 20 liter, literally only this much. So you're probably about 100 mil off 20 liter. Yeah. Wow, that's actually fantastic, isn't it? It's a lot of wine. Wow. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is just put the lid on. Okay, so Cooper say it's okay not to use the sleeve uh, and just put the lid on. So we're just gonna make sure no one touches that because it doesn't have any clips on it and we'll put it out of the way and we'll leave it for another two months and then we're gonna rack it again and we'll rack it over to one of these fermenters. Mm. Okay, it's almost seven months, Father, and uh, the rice wine is ready to be bottled. Can't wait. And um, you know, I've learned so much about this, this rice wine since we started to now, and I've got a lot of friends who speak Mandarin, and I've asked them how do you actually pronounce it, because my pronunciation on it is not very good, uh, but I believe it's something like Midiao. Yeah, close yeah. enough. Yeah, and uh, but I've also learned there's so many other ways or so many variants to the rice wine, like Baijo and Quanjo. And there's like, I think I've learned like 20 different ways, but the most common way of saying rice wine in Mandarin, I believe, is mi jiao. Mm, mi jiao, yeah. So when we first removed the rice and it was just left with the fluid and it was that white sort of creamy color, um, that was at 28 days. And then uh, we racked it over to another vessel. And then two months later on the third month, I racked it over again and it was more of a yellowy color. And there was a lot of sediment on the bottom, which is really interesting. Uh, and it became a lot clearer. And then I racked it over again on the fifth month to the Demijon. And so this Demijon is a 34 liter and uh, it's got a, a airlock just like a normal fermenter. Now, what we're doing here is what they call cold crashing. So to actually uh, let all the sediments come to the base, to the bottom, you can either use maybe a Camden tab tablets to kill off the yeast and just let everything settle. But I didn't want to go to chemicals, I wanted to do it naturally. So what we've done, we let it cold crash. Now cold crashing is basically when you put it in a cold area and it actually, causes all the sediments to come down faster and also the yeast to come down as well. So you know when it's finished fermenting, when you look at your airlock and cold crashing would ca sometimes will cause it, the fluid to actually go the opposite direction. So in the early mornings it does do that, but as it warms up it starts to equal out again. All right, so now what we're gonna do is use this pump, which I got from D from Country Brewer, and we're gonna pump the fluid out of this Demijong. Uh, first, we're just gonna get another hydrometer reading. The first one we got at 28 days was 0.99. Now, most wines finish at 99. Uh, I just wanna take one more reading, um, and we're not 100% sure of the alcohol content. Now, with rice wine, depending on your quantities, we used five kilo of rice to 10 litre of water, and we doubled it up, and we got uh, just under 20 litre. But when I finished racking the first one, it actually was at uh, just over 19 litres. So we've got probably just under 19 litres now after doing the two more rackings. Uh, there was less of the sediment after the second and third one. So I have sanitised this pump, and I've also sanitised everything else you see here. These are new bottles. Uh, and they did not need to be sterilized. So these are now sanitized and we're ready to go. And I've got them on the bottle tree. 
And this bottle tree is brilliant. It's from Morgan's and uh, it can actually fit 81 bottles on it, depending on how many attachments you put on top. So each attachment allows 10 bottles. So you can either put glass or plastic. Now, one thing I've got to note, we are using glass here because uh, when you're brewing uh, with beer, it's okay to bottle in plastic, you know, around about maybe six, eight percent alcohol. But when you start going over 10 percent, uh, that alcohol can actually start damaging the plastic. So we want to go to glass. And so we believe that this rice wine will range anywhere from 10 to 20 percent alcohol level. Now, we're not 100 percent sure. It's probably mid that point, probably 15. We're just not sure. Okay, so now, I'll grab the hose here, place it onto the pump. There we go. And then I'm gonna place on the little bottler. Now this time round, I'm not gonna take the valve out. Now last time I took the valve out to let it flow faster. Thanks, brother. But this time round, to allow the fluid to go into the bottles, we're gonna need that valve, because when you push that valve up, the, uh, the wine will come through, and we wanna sort of control it a bit better. So I'm gonna get Father to pump it while I actually use the little bottler. So Father, if you can come around this side, I'll take the airlock off. There we go. Actually, let's have a quick look at the wine. That is looking incredible. Look how yellow that looks. Yeah. I am really keen to try this. All right, so now I'll just place the pump in. Now, one thing to note, this pump actually comes with this little red piece. Now, this red piece has uh, little walls, little plastic walls inside. What it does, it allows it to connect into the pump, but then the fluid goes on the top. Now, what that means, you've got a little point on the bottom. If that touches the bottom of the demijong, it's not gonna unsettle all the sediment. Okay, so then we're just gonna get clear fluid coming through that, which is what we want. All right, so now, we'll just place that in. Father, if you can hold that for us. All right, if you can just give it a little bit of a pump, Father. That's it. Okay, so it's stabilized at 0.99. It hasn't changed from the time when we first racked it, when we took the rice out. Anyway, so what we're gonna do here we're gonna try this rice wine. That looks incredible, doesn't it? Mm. Look how clear that is. Look at that. Beautiful. Father, I'll just grab mine. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. That looks incredible. Great recipe. Ah, oh, it smells great. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna tell you how it tastes like because we've got a live chat coming up in a couple of weeks and we'll let all the guys tell you what it tastes like. Okay, so whatever you do, don't put this back into the fermenter. Either drink it or throw it out. So one thing I didn't mention, uh, this is a bottle washer which I've got from Country Brewer and uh, it's brilliant. And so what it does, it just basically just pumps the, the fluid up, the uh, phosphoric acid and sanitizes the bottles um, and it really cleans it well. So I'll put a link for that below if you're looking for something like this and also for the Morgan um, bottle tree. Okay, we're now ready to bottle. Uh, so these brown ones are Father's and these are a 375 ml bottle. Father, if you can pump away. We'll just get another bottle ready. This thing is so easy, isn't it? I'll just take the bottles out while Father's doing that. That's it. Oops, that's right. We'll get used to it. This is a great tool, Father. Mm, very easy. Very easy to pump, isn't it? Mm. Look how it just climbs up that cylinder. Mm. Oh, it's just incredible. All right, getting close. Okay, so these bottles here are soft closers. They're finished off. What we may do, Father, we'll bottle these first, but what we're gonna do is just put some caps. We're gonna cap it off. So if you do use the caps, then you're gonna need one of these closers, these wine closers. Uh, that way, if you just drink a little, at least you can close the bottle back off again. So once again, uh, these are Morgans, uh, and uh, these are really good product. And we've just got a hand capper. I'll just open this up. Okay, Father, I'll get you to show us how to put the caps on. Yeah, just pop the cap on top, sit it nice. Put that there, and let's close those down. Very good. Just nice and easy, isn't it? Yeah. And um, just, let me just see. Just crimps it on here. Yeah. Wow, nice. Watertight. Beautiful. Last one. Father, what I'll do is grab your milk crate. Um, I've actually sanitized this as well. So this is all clean. So we'll just put this in here out of our way. I'll put these big ones in. Okay, so now 
Uh, we're gonna bottle my ones. These are one litre bottles. Um, I picked them up at a really good price. Uh, and so usually using clear bottles is probably not the best for brewing, uh, for bottling wine. Uh, they do prefer darker bottles, um, so it doesn't, uh, the light doesn't uh, penetrate and doesn't affect the wine. Um, but I'm gonna be putting these in a dark, cool spot and uh, that's gonna uh, help the, uh, the process of maturing. Okay, so I've got nine of these bottles, but I've also got two lots of 500 mil, and I'm gonna be bottling these for my friend Jay, who actually donated some of these bottles to us. So we'll go again, Father. So now you'll be able to see the clearness of the actual wine. All right, coming to the last one litre. A little bit, oh, that was perfect. Okay, all right, that's the last 500. Now I've pulled out another one litre bottle because we do have just a little bit left inside. So we're just gonna use this as our tester bottle. So this one will have sediment in it. Father, we're done. we're done. This is fantastic. So in the live chat, we're gonna be uh, tasting the lager I've made, the sparkling ale and the Canadian blonde. Plus we're gonna be trying this rice wine and believe it or not, I thought I ran out, yep. but in actual fact, I found uh, a bottle that's just over halfway of honeymead with the extra honey in it. So I wanna try that on the live chat as well. Okay, so look out for that live chat. It's coming up soon. So Father, thank you very much for all your help. That Thank was fantastic. You. Pleasure. So um, I also wanted to mention that I will put a link below for everything that I've spoken about, for Country Brewer, for Coopers. Uh, in actual fact, I just remembered, I'm gonna put three carbonated drops into this last bottle, and I'm gonna make this into a champagne. Am I allowed to call it a champagne? Why not? All right. Sparkling rice wine. Sparkling rice wine. I'm just gonna test and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm looking forward to tasting this sparkling rice wine on the live chat as well. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments at all, please leave them below and we will get back to you. And I'd ask you, please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video, and there's many more to come. Thanks guys. Thank you. I think I'm going to become a professional alcoholic. Cheers. Cheers. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Mate, you got about four or five litres in that. It will come to 20 litres. Yeah. Are you Syrian? I'm, I'm Syrian, bro. Yeah. And everyone's got their own way, but I believe the most common way is mid-year. Is that correct? Yeah, good to me. <laughs>